Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. interview is coming out of the Toronto International Film Festival this past fall 2019 with Yaron Zilberman and Yehuda Nahari Halele and, and we are talking about their new film, Incitement. This is a film you're going to want to see and I know <laughs> you're probably laughing, maybe even rolling your eyes because I say that quite often, but but I really do try to do as much research as I can before I uh, you know reach out to directors and actors and so on and and sometimes it's a fluke, especially at the film festival. You know, you get in, in, invited to things all the time, and and it's there's just never enough time. That's that's what I find. But I was so thrilled that I was able to uh, get into a conversation with with both of these gentlemen, and and we had some technical issues, and you're going to hear about it when we start. And and Yaron is uh, was so kind to, to to say this was like the coolest interview ever because we had all these technical issues. Here we are, ready to roll. We got three different mics, three different channels. I'm if anyone in the business knows an h6 zoom i'm 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 jacked in i'm we we got lots of you know high-tech gear to make this work well and what are we doing we're we're capturing um, on three different channels a russian radio station Uh, iran was pretty convinced there was some sort of conspiracy at play anyway we grabbed uh, one mic the recorder we went out into the hallway we were watched by others it was really odd and interesting and kind of fun but incitement is a film that is uh, it's challenging to watch. I mean, it's it's you know uh, quote it's a rigorous psychological thriller close quote. It's it's a, it's a film that that depicts and leads up to the 1995 assassination of of Israeli uh, Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, and this is a film that breaks ground. I think technologically, this is a film about radicalism and, and education. This is a film about love and and it's a film about relationships. And we talk about revenge and. And and we talk about um, how 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 people become radicalized and 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 what does this thing democracy, you know, really actually mean and 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 how, and and how does one even begin to define what's normal, in a situation like this when you are raised in the, with this kind of. Uh, critical, I would say, tension all around you. You know, you've got this not only metaphorical wall, but you've got years of history of of, of breakdown and violence and 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 revenge and 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 all kinds of um, these challenging situations. And yet, that would become sort of part of your normal everyday life. And 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 never mind the more metaphorical wall. You actually got this wall there that you're dealing with and and people saying uh, one thing and believing another and the paradox and the contradiction of all that it comes out uh, really uh, in, in in a fascinating way and and in this film incitement the cinematography is stunning this is a beautiful film and and Yehuda's uh, uh, performance is just utterly uh, brilliant in, in my opinion so stay tuned uh, for a short interview because we got cut into because of all these technical issues we had the film's called incitement it's from the Toronto International Film Festival this year, 2019. Look for it coming up soon. Don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and my public speaking. You can pick up a copy of my book uh, from a few years back called Real Changes Incremental. I am working on something new. I'm hoping in the next 12 to 18 months you're going to see that, uh, at least on the digital bookshelves. It's a book uh, about uh, it's a book about relationships and, and, and diving in and, and, and having conversations. Uh, and don't forget to face to face live.ca where this all happens. We're coming up on about 500, probably in 2020, we'll break break uh, over that sort of 500 mark, which is insane to me that we've uh, had that many live conversations and published that many interviews online, looking towards some pretty exciting things for 2020. If you want to get behind the work we do, you can do that uh, financially and, and donate to us monthly uh, through patreon.com. A small amount uh, goes a long way, believe me, when a few people come together. We'd really appreciate that. And if you can't do that, totally understand. 
totally get it. Leaving us a review on iTunes uh, would be really helpful. Getting some digital feedback and, and uh, tweet about us, uh, post us on Facebook. Please uh, let your friends know for the, the interviews along. You can also sign up for our newsletter. And um, you can also advertise with us as well if you're looking to reach out to an interesting demographic. Do you know that one of our interviews has been listened to over 100,000 times? That's pretty amazing for, for, uh, you know, for, for what I set out to do originally. And so that's, that's a huge reach. We're global. Uh, we, we're listened to mostly in the U.S. and Canada and the U.K., but, but our audience is wide and it goes in, and, and quite deep as well. So if you want to advertise with us, you can through newsletters. You can do that online, banner ads, and we can even uh, you know do some shout-outs during interviews as well. So we've got you covered. Reach out to us through face-to-face-live.ca. And don't forget rabble.ca as well. I'm also hosted there on their platform. News for the rest of us, bloggers, podcasters, writers, journalists, thinkers, people – you know, getting into it, rolling up their sleeves and, and making a difference uh, and, and, and challenging the status quo. Check, check uh, out face-to-face there, but also, more importantly, other, uh, other work as well, rabble.ca. Coming right up, uh, we're going to be talking about a film called Incitement with Yaron Zilberman and Yehuda Nahari Halevi. Coming right up, don't touch that dial. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by two very special guests here with us today to uh, talk about their new film, Incitement. I'm going to let them introduce themselves. And, you know, I'm, uh, uh, and they're going to learn a little bit about me here uh, as well, uh, that uh, I'm, on, I'm coming up on about my 460th interview. And, folks, we are doing our interview in the hallway at the Intercontinental Hotel, 17th floor, by the exit door, because we're having technical issues. How uncool <laughs> is that? So here's the director of Incitement to introduce himself, uh, followed by uh, one of the main cast members. So my name is Yaron Zilberman. I'm the director of Incitement. I just want to say that I think it's the coolest to have an interview in the corridor. Not that it's uncool, but the coolest ever. So I'm having a blast right now. Please, you there. Yeah. Hey, I'm uh, Yehuda Nahari Halevi, and I think I agree with uh, Yaron. It's it's perfect. It's uh, un uh, yeah. It's 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 different, I suppose. Different, unique. This is one interview that you guys are going to remember, especially the crazy guy with the colorful shirt <laughs> and the headphones that we're picking up. I think it was Russian music. Russian music. What's yeah. going on with that? To try to interfere with the movie. There's no question about it. I think, I think something else is going on. Speaking of interfering with the movie, uh, world premiere last night uh, in Toronto. Welcome to the festival. And by the way, guys, uh, uh, congratulations. Oh, and for the folks out there, we're using one microphone, so do bear with us. But congratulations on a, a moving, uh, powerful, uh, and unsettling film. I mean, it's, it's political. It's deeply relational. Your performance is astounding, by the way. It's re- it really is. It's, uh, and I hear there was a bomb scare last night at the theater. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, we uh, started the screening, and about five minutes into the screening, you know, it was like it's fully packed, sold out theater. Everybody is very moving, exciting. Five minutes into the film, boom, they stop the film, and they say there's some kind of a bomb alarm, and everybody has to, you know, leave the uh, leave the theater. And we were, of course, worried, first of all, for the safety of everybody. That's number one. But we know that, you know, 99.99% of the time, it's just nothing. Somebody left, you know, an article, and, and you have to ch- check it, which is what happened. But people leave, and you're afraid that they're not going to come back because it's a 9 o'clock show, and it took about an hour for the police court to come in and clean, clean the place and make sure that it's totally safe. But... Almost everybody came back, which was beautiful. So we only maybe lost, you know, 30 people out of 500. So we have, you know, salute the Torontians for being so persistent and so brave and courageous and walk with, you know, with us to watch the movie. It's, uh, it's, I mean, unfortunate, obviously, that that happened, but th- what, an, what an unbelievably memorable experience it's going to be for, for those people that were there, the Q&A, the film itself, et cetera. It's just, it, it really is pretty remarkable. And glad to hear everybody was okay, and, you know, too bad for those 30 people that left. You know, they're going to they're gonna have to get into a rush lineup for, based on the, the reviews. They're going to have to get into a rush lineup to see the next showing. D- did you sign on because this was a political film? 
or is this, did, did you just read the script and go, this is something I want to do? Was it, how, how did you get drawn in? Because this is a pretty, I mean, this is one of those movies where I would say to Elizabeth, my wife, you know, it's a great film, but it's also an important film. And I think that's a really interesting distinction. Look, it's very challenging to do, to uh, uh, portray some, some, a character that everyone's hate. I mean, I wish that everyone's hated, but, but the, the, the reality that he got fans also, but, you know, it's, it's, it, it was very challenging for me. And, but I could never reject an offer like this. And even though my father told me at the beginning he was a bit cautious about this character because he didn't want, you know, they, my father and his father praying in the same synagogue. And we know the family, so we are kind of related, but it was, I would never say no to a part like this, to a role like this. It's, um, it's, it's enormous. It's, it's, a, it's a gift for an actor to, to have an uh, opportunity like this. And the fact that I'm coming from the same, that I raised in the same community, uh, give, gave me um, some, some, uh, yeah, some insights for, for, for that. And I had the background, and uh, I used to be a religious kid, so I'm, I'm coming from there. And so it felt to me, in, in a way, that it's a meant to be for me. So, yeah. So, so felt, uh, felt real. Yeah, yeah I, I wanted to ask you about the, the fiction and the reality, the archival footage, the way you situate uh, um, pretty, well, quite a few characters, mostly your character, I guess. In, uh, can you talk a little bit about sure, the, blur of the blurring of the lines? How m not that it, yeah. and you know, it's so interesting for me, I don't need a movie to be true. You know the way someone will see a movie and they'll go, oh, was it true? Like, was it based on truth? As if that makes it more, more important yeah, yeah. or meaningful, yeah. but, but doesn't a film like this also point to other truths, right? Things that you learned uh, when you were a religious boy and, and living in the community and so on. Yeah. So for me, it was very important um, for the movie to be to be true. So that you know, you're right that fiction movies don't have to be true at all. They just have to be great, <laughs> a great experience, regardless. Uh, but in this particular case, because of the subject matter, it, it is the assassination of Isaac Rabin, which really changed the course of history, as far as I'm concern and it was important for me to tell the people that that really what happened so that uh, people would gain as much insight out of what happened in order to avoid the next assassination in a way and also in order to keep democracy and fight for democracy and not to take democracy for granted so looking at all that I wanted to convince in a way convince meaning you know subconsciously convince the audience that what they're saying is true and using the archival footage helped me tremendously so I watched hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of footage related to the period, related to the scenes in the movie, and saw what was, wh what can I use in order to show that this is exactly, that's exactly how it happened, that's what happened, these are the events that we're talking about, and to use it in that way. And at some point, I did not need to use it that much, because once you establish it, you know, you already feel that, oh, if you know the director needed, if the movie needed, so to speak, we could you know pull another piece of footage and just show you that, and w and so that so that's throughout the movie, and then the conclusion of the movie, which is the ending scene where you have the, that's a spoiler, but you have, the <laughs> <laughs> but everybody knows somebody was assassinated, so there's an assassination. Spo uh, spoiler, <laughs> small s, small s, <laughs> small, small, because everybody knows. Nevertheless, when you watch the movie, I hope you forget. Um, so we had the footage of, you know, there was one person who actually was a bystander that filmed the whole assassination live, which is the only case, I think, in history where you have a real somebody. Is that, is that from the balcony? the balcony? It's from the balcony. It's the balcony above the area, the parking area where Robin, you know, went off stage to the back, which was where his car was um, actually waiting for him, and he filmed from the balcony. It's the only case, even if JFK, you know, you have, you have in JFK, you have the video where he's being shot, but you don't see the shooter. That's the whole thing, right? That's the conspiracy, who, who shot and why shot, all that stuff. For us, we have the shooter. We see on camera a person, you know, you got me shooting, it's hot Robin. So using that footage was actually the conclusion. So if the movie, in a way, I'm, I'm talking about more from form, you know, sure. 
formally, if you see, it's from archive to you know our world, so to speak, uh, back and forth. Then the conclusion is that you see the murder. Did, did some of the lines that you all used used uh, were they actually from uh, newsreel footage or uh, articles that have been written? Those kinds of things from a form and a structure and a writing perspective. Thing, talk, I'd say one thing: everything. Everything is based on words, logic, and rationale that he used and said. Everything without exception. And part of, he's going to say that, but part of his preparation for the role was to read, you know, tens of pages of testimonies in court and in the government inquiries where he actually spoke his mind and, you know, what he thought and what he did. Da, da, da. And reading it so many times, eventually Yuda used to call me on the phone and speak the way the character speaks, which was frightening. Because once you get into his logic, you can keep on, you can go and go and go with it. And that was the scary part. Yeah, so I, um, Yaron fed me with a lot of information. And I saw, uh, I saw videos and I, I, I saw how he sit, how he, how he talk, how he move when he's entrance to the, to the court. So that's how I base his, um, is a physical uh, posture and, and how we and everything and and for to understand his logic um, I read a lot of testimonies and and everything that any information that that you just throw on me I just like soak in and till you know in order to understand how he thinks and why he said what he what what he's saying it's uh it was a very very powerful and interesting and 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 surprising to to m find where i where i s the connection in me you know till uh, but i i needed to adjust everything i need to adjust my um, my whole perspective and way of thinking in order to to um to uh, portray this character in, in the best way so we have to sadly we got to wrap up in a couple of minutes and so I want to ask one question that's probably could take you know a, 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 a university lecture to answer how does somebody like you who portrays uh, this man Yigal who seems to be pretty normal who's fallen in love with Nava who goes to this space uh, that reminded me by the way of the well of the souls from uh, Raiders <laughs> and and you walk in in the number 32 and it, and she says it's like walking into the Bible and the heart I mean it's just such a touching beautiful gorgeous scene and so tragic in s on so many levels how does then a, a person like that and I know there's no simple answer to this question but that's what this is about I hope a film like this is to get the conversation going H how do you get there how do you get there okay so uh, I'm talking as a director and a writer a co-writer that writes a scene like that uh, for me you know, this particular person was living between two options in a way. I mean, I'm saying that in a very, in a simplistic way. One option is the normal way. You know, find a wife, get married, have children. You live your life. With Nava, you would never have shot Robin. There is no question in my mind. This other option is to go all the way with some kind of a vision, you know, like, like we can say extreme and crazy and whatever, but for me it's not interesting actually. What's interesting is that the guy was locked on the possibility of shooting a prime minister and by that becoming a, a hero on a biblical level for those who are against the peace. He compares himself to Samson and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Joel yeah, and like yeah, the yeah, big yeah, Old yeah, Testament yeah, prophets, yeah, right? Exactly, exactly. So he was thinking that way. So he had these two options. One, to get the girl, the good looking, you know, blonde from this sort of uh, high society of the settlers. And she was called Nava, the beautiful and wise. You get the prize or <coughs> you get to be a hero in other ways by shooting a prime minister. So, b but I think the two things can work, can, can live together. And that's the complexity of us as human beings. And that's why we need to be aware of it. And also in terms of checks and balances, and to you know be the gatekeepers for such things as as teachers, as parents, as politicians to know that you know yes somebody can be in love and somebody can be romantic and somebody can offer that but there's always the other. There's you know. always the other side, unfortunately, the dark side, and, and as you said, complicated, paradoxical. Can you can you speak to it? We've got about a minute to go. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's I all yours. I think Talk the I think scene. yeah. Which which one? Jericho, when you go very romantic with Nava, 
Ah, okay, but I, no, I, I, because I think I think, but the the, the essence. He's, he's directing <laughs> he, you now. Yeah, I know. I used to it, you know. <laughs> um, uh, I, but I think that that the best way to to say it, it's a uh, there is a there is a great connection between the father and son. So I think that he's kind of a, he's kind of well, he's, he wanted to he wanted to to be he he wanted to be validated for uh, like he he wanted validation he wanted to be known as someone as big because uh, that's how he got raised by and that's what he uh, what he've heard and so i think the the, uh, the this is the way that i that i choose to um, um yeah interpret it so that it's the whole thing like there is a very very strong core between them because i i think that he wanted to be like the father that he father will will see him as like yeah acknowledging him and see him like a, a hero or like see me please just see me because i'm 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 different i i'm i'm smart enough just like please accept me as i am you know sadly we got to wrap it up but i wonder if he had been accepted for who he was if things could have turned out differently as corny and idealistic as that might sound uh, but had they fallen in love. I can't believe we got to end the interview, but it makes sense. And what a pleasure talking to you guys here. We've been talking on the uh, right outside of room 1738 at the Intercontinental uh, Hotel about incitement world premiere. Thank you so much to you both for joining me here today. Thank you.